Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening. Um, I would like to welcome you to the webinar and thank you for joining. My name is Reem Jishi and I am a coach with The Run Formula and also with Outrival Racing. And um, just wanted to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on the Run Formula website for future viewing. If you have any questions um, throughout the course of this webinar, please go ahead and type them into the questions box and I will address them at the end. So let's get started. The um, topic for this evening is pool running, why you should consider adding, adding it to your training. So I first we'll start with, with what is pool running. And pool running is basically what it sounds like. It's a form of deep water running that closely mimics the movement of actual running on land. And it's also known um, by some other terms as aqua jogging or deep water running, but it's essentially just running in the water. It doesn't involve using a treadmill and um, requires actually very little equipment that we will um, go through on the, on the next slide. So what do you need? Really, you only need one thing. You need deep water. You need water that you cannot touch um, the bottom in and the deeper the water, the greater um, resistance that you have. So you want to try to find a deep end of a pool or you can also um, aqua jog in a pool. I mean, sorry, in a lake or an ocean, really just any, any form of water that you can't touch the bottom. So um, then there's a number of optional items. The first one is a jog belt. And a jog belt is basically a flotation device that sits around your waist. And I recommend that really anyone, well, anyone that's new to aqua jogging or that doesn't feel very comfortable in the water should use a jog belt. And the reason here is that the jog belt keeps you, gives you some flotation and it allows you to focus on what you're doing, which is trying to um, get in a good workout with proper technique. So if, um, if once you have been aqua jogging for a while and you start feeling pretty comfortable in the water, then you can get rid of the jog belt and that will increase the work that you're doing in the water, make it a more challenging workout. But um, you can always just continue to use the jog belt and um, for, for all your workouts. So the next um, item, a piece of equipment that you can use is a bungee cord. And the bungee cord is just an elastic cord and you attach one end of it to the back side of the jog belt. Um, and you attach the second side to something that doesn't move, like um, a pole on the side of the pool or the ladder getting out of the pool. And what the bungee cord does is you, so you face away from the object that you've attached it to. And as you start running, you don't move very quickly when you aqua jog, but you'll have some forward motion. And so what the bungee cord will do is hold you still. And so it just creates a little extra resistance, again, making it more challenging in the water. And then um, and the final op optional point is running shoes. And this is just another form of adding resistance and also gives you a little feel of just wearing the shoes that, that you train in. But running shoes are definitely um, very optional. Okay, so how do I do it? Good pool running form closely mimics actual running form. So you want to have a nice tall body position. Your core is engaged. Um, your your toes are pulled up towards um, towards your knees. You have the same running arm swing. So all of that is completely the same as you would do um, on dry land. But there are some tweaks. Um, the first one is that you start out with a more upright body position. So on land, we talk about having a forward lean. And this is to, to give you free speed and to help you go faster. In the water, you really want a really tall, upright body position. So you're totally vertical. And for this, this allows your core to remain engaged, your glutes to remain engaged. If you start leaning forward, it's very difficult to hold your, your proper body position. So, um, and then you'll, your run form will, will start falling apart. So if you start when you're in the water, finding yourself leaning forward too much, really try to pull yourself up. So you're nice and nice and tall and straight. And the next, um, difference is that you have a higher knee lift. So this is similar if you were doing, um, a high knee running drill. So your knees are lifting up. They're coming up as, as, um, as high as your waist 
And um, it's it's a piston like action where you drive your knees up and then push push your feet back down to to finish out the the stroke. So um, and then the third point that's different is that your back kick is more compact. So it's a much shorter stride length than you would um, outdoors. And um, so here, in order to make it more challenging to increase your level of effort, you increase your cadence. So. Um, on dry land, we get our speed. Once we develop cadence, we get our speed primarily through the kick and the back, through the length of the stride. In the pool, you don't want to do that. You want to keep a nice compact kick. But as you increase the level of effort and you move towards some of the sprints, you really can pick up your cadence in the water and get a very quick turnover. So how do I do it? Here is um, just a photo of someone who's aqua jogging, and this points out some of the, um, of the features that we're looking for. So you see her body is nice and tall, very um, vertical position. She's wearing an aqua jogging belt. This is um, a Speedo belt, but there are lots of other options out there that you can get, and it just sits nice and tight around her waist, and it just helps keep her keep her body afloat, keeps her head above above water. And so you'll see just starting with the arm position here that she has um, a bend in her arms somewhere in that 90 to 110 degree that you want to keep in your arms. Her arms are relatively close to her body. Her knee is nice and high. So you see it pulled up, up to waist height, and her toes are dorsiflexed. So they're pulling upward towards the knee as she takes her stride. And you see that the back leg, instead of being extended very far back, is just a little pushing a little far back. So um, this is a really great example of what um, aqua jog, good aqua jog running form looks like. So why is it beneficial? And here I'm going to go ahead and um, just pick up all the points and then we can talk through them. Okay, so the first benefit to aqua jogging is that it's very neuromuscular specific to running. And what that means is that you use the same muscles aqua jogging that you do on dry land running. So it is very similar. You want to, in order, if any time general fitness is good, but if you want to replace the benefits that you get from a specific sport, the closer you can get to that sport, the better. So aqua jogging, because you are, the whole goal is to mimic your running form that you do on land to mimic that in the water, then it really, it pulls in the same kind of muscles. And it's, um, it's also very aerobic in nature. When you're running, your heart rate gets up, you're building your cardiovascular capacity and the same thing happens in the water. So you get a very specific, um, similar aerobic response. And, um, going to the next point here is that water is heavier than air. And so there's a built in resistance. So as you move your legs through the water, you're pushing back on your muscles and that in turn develops strength of your, of your running muscles. So it's just a really great way to also include some strength training into your, into your workout. And if done correctly, it can improve your running form and posture. So as we um, discussed previously, you are your goal is to keep that nice tall running position, keep your, your core engaged, get your glutes working. And if you stay through that, and work, then you can hear now you're in the water running is very repetitive motion. So as you're in the water and you're constantly repeating, your, your leg turnover, your arm turnover, your body starts getting used to what that form is like and, and remembers it. And so you can take that on dry land, but it's important that you are doing the proper form here because if you're doing improper um, technique in the water, that in turn is going to translate to on land. So nice and tall, core engaged, arms swinging in a running motion, knees are driving up and foot is pushing down, a nice quick control turnover. And, um, it also, aqua jogging also has the benefit because it's in the water, water facilitates repair of damaged muscles. So you can, um, aqua jogging is a great, um, tool for a, a recovery run, but also you can do a really hard workout and your muscles will be, um, the water helps to, to recover your muscles and why this all works 
is because of point number two. And that's because um, aqua jogging is a no impact exercise. You are never to, to be an impact. You're touching, you're touching the ground. When you run, running is a high impact sport. Every time you touch the ground, you are putting on a force of about three times your body weight. So there's a lot of jarring. There's a lot of stress on your muscles, your joints, your bones. And so aqua jogging takes all of that away. So you're able to get really great run specific conditioning without the pounding. And what that allows you to do is to, to pick up your volume, to be in the water quite a bit and to recover a lot more quickly from it than you would from an, from an outdoor run. And the one last thing that's not on this slide is the aqua jogging is a, um, it burns calories even higher than running on land. So if you're injured and this is where you're getting your activity, you can um, feel good that you're, you're still burning the calories. So who should water run? The first thing that you think of, I think most people think of, um, for aqua jogging is the injured runner. So you've been out running and all of a sudden something happens and you can't keep running. You've gone through all of your stages of grief and you're like, now what? And you know, the next thing is to figure out what you, what you can do. So we're going to spend, um, more time talking about the injured um, runner on on the next slide. But um, if you are a runner, chances are you have been injured, are currently injured, or if you haven't been, that you will be injured at some point because it's just a sport. The injuries do happen. The statistics are that 82 to 85% of runners will get injured at some point in their running career. So, um, and the next person who should water run is an injury prone runner. So this might be someone who is just fine running, you know, 15 or 20 miles a week, running easier pace runs. But then when they start picking up, adding either a lot of mileage or they start picking up their intensity that, that they start suffering from injuries. So water jogging is um, a great way to, to add in, to build additional mileage or to, um, to add an intensity. And I should also sort of lump into this category as a runner who's returning from injury. So depending on the type of injury and depending on how long you've been out, you might need to, um, when you return to running, you might not be able to return to where you picked off. Let's say you were training for a marathon, you were up to 40 miles a week, and that was five times a week of running plus, and it included not just your, your um, Z1 runs, but it also included some, some tempo work and included time on the track. When you first come back from your injury, chances are you're not going to be able to do all of that intensity or do all that mileage right away. So um, aqua jogging, you can use that as a substitute for some of your workouts. It's a great place to be able to, to get in that speed work or to continue working um, on your tempo exercises. So it's also a supplemental training for a healthy runner. Sometimes it's difficult to get out there and run five days a week. It, it allows you to, um, to break up, um, and just add some diversity into it. It's a great way to build miles or to add intensity as we, um, discussed above. And it's also just something to think about when it's too hot or too cold for quality workouts. So, um, for anyone that's that's training for a spring marathon and lives in the Northeast, you know that it's really difficult to get out in the winter time and do any quality runs. If it's 15 degrees and icy outside, you don't want to get out and be doing your your speed workouts. So if you can take it now and go into the controlled setting of a pool and get in those really good workouts and not worry about um, what the conditions are outside. And on the flip side too, if it gets too hot, if you live somewhere um, in the South, you live in South Carolina and it's summer and you're training for a fall race, it's really difficult to get in all of those miles outdoors because it's just the, the weather conditions don't allow you to do that. So again, take it into the pool, mix it up and get in some of your, your mileage and intensity in the water. So going back to the injured runner now. So because aqua jogging is a no impact activity, it is a great option for an injured runner. So the first thing though, is that you should always consult with your medical doctor before you begin any kind of activity, new activity with injury. Um, chances are they'll tell you it's just fine to go ahead and start aqua jogging, but it's important that you know that it's, that it is okay to do so before you get started. So it's most beneficial 
for gravity oriented injuries. So for example, if you have um, a stress fracture in your foot or shin splints, tendonitis, knee pain, plantar fasciitis, those are some examples where the pounding on, on the ground makes it much more difficult or in some cases like stress fractures, you can't, you can't run with a stress fracture. So and these are some great options, um, types of injuries where aqua jogging becomes a great option. So, um, but there are a couple that I just want to, to note some caution. The first is for hip flexor injuries. So hip flexors are the muscles that lift your knees up. And as you um, saw from the, the earlier photo, when you aqua jog, you lift your knees up pretty high. So your hip flexors are working to raise your knees higher than they, than they would outdoors. And also because of the resistance that the water gives, they're working harder. So if you do have a hip flexor injury, you want to take it first, make sure with your doctor that it, this is okay, um, that you can get started, but then you want to take it a little more conservatively at the beginning. So maybe not drive your knees up as high or slow down your leg speed, and then just test things out and see how they're doing and then build into it as you, as you continue to heal and get stronger. And the second um, injury that I just want to note, some caution on is a hamstring injury. And this will um, happen, especially if you start overextending on your stride. So as we discussed before, you want to keep a nice, tight, short stride in aqua jogging, because as you, if, if you start extending out um, your your leg in the back, then you're pushing against the water here and that puts more strain on the hamstring. So if you keep it nice and tight, that puts a little less pressure on your hamstrings. But again, here, take it, take it easy. Um, see, see how it, how it feels before pushing anything because aqua jogging is, is meant to help you recover from injury, not to, um, to further aggravate injury. So how long can I maintain my fitness? That's the big question, right? You're out for a while and you're like, okay, fine, I, I'll do this, but it's so that I can get back to running pretty soon. So how long can I, can I continue with aqua jogging and help um, and hold on to my fitness? So um, it's not an area that's been studied a lot. Um, there's a couple small studies out there that show that pool running can enable a well-trained runner to maintain fitness for four to six weeks. Um, the first study out there involved 10 runners who exclusively did um, deep water running for four weeks. So they replaced all their workouts that they would on dry land with water workouts. And um, they compared their 5K times pre and post. And the researchers found that there was no statistical difference in 5K time or other performance um, markers such as um, submaximal oxygen consumption or lactate threshold. So that basically shows that for that period of four weeks, you can move all of your training into the water and that your 5k time won't be impacted. Um, the second study was taken over a six week period. And this one involved 16 runners that were separated into two groups, one that did aqua jogging workouts and the second group that did only overland running. And they used the same training intensities and durations. And the research at the end of the six weeks found that there was no differences between the groups in um, maximal blood glucose, blood lactate, and body composition. So again, the two groups showed the same um, conditioning, whether they were doing the workouts on dry land or, um, or in the water. So that should, should give you, you know, some sense that the pool running is good. And it makes sense because again, you're using the same muscles that you would running. You're getting a really good aerobic workout and, um, and so it should, you should be able to hold on to your run conditioning for a while while you're, if, if you're out. So how do you structure a workout? So the first point here that I want to say is that it's based on time intervals. So if you put your Garmin in the water, it's just not going to accurately reflect how far you're running. So you don't want to take a four mile, um, run workout outdoors and say that you have to run four miles in the water because that's just, that's, that's not going to happen. You'll end up um, being in the water for a much longer period of time. So what you do is you take your running workout that's prescribed for outdoors and you figure out how much time it would take. So if your workout again is you are running, the main side of your workout is four miles at Z1 pace. Your Z1 pace is around a 10 minute mile. Then what you do is you run for 40 minutes in the water. And similarly, if, um, if you have a track workout, your track workout's eight by 400 at, um, a 
5k intensity, then what you end up doing is saying, okay, that um, pace, it takes me on, on the track, it takes me about a minute and a half to do a five to do a 400. So now my workout in the water becomes eight by 90 second intervals on whatever recovery you would use on land, you use the same in the water. So if you're doing on equal recovery, it's eight by 90 seconds with 90 seconds easy in between. And just as one more example, if you're doing some, um, some mild tempo repeats, say my tempo, so in this, um, say that your tempo pace is an eight minute mile and you're doing four times one mile repeats, then you do four by eight minute um, efforts in the water at your tempo um, intensity and take whatever you would on dry land again. So like two, two minutes easy between efforts. So you just take any workout that you have on land and you can convert it into time and then use that time in the water for your workout. So one note, um, in the water, your heart rate will be lower than it is on dry land. And the reason for that is that blood circulates better in the water than it does on land. Um, and so your heart doesn't, it just doesn't need to pump as hard. So your heart rate may be five to 10 beats lower in the water than it is on land. So you can still use heart rate as somewhat of a guide. You just need to knock out five to 10 beats from your heart rate. Um, you can also, and I recommend going with perceived exertion here. And if we just go through the run formula, QT2 systems zones, it's, it's the same thing. So you have zone R, which is your recovery, which is your nice, easy run. So often after some of our harder runs, we have a day built in where you're doing a 30 or 40 minute recovery run. Um, aqua jogging is a really great place to do your recovery run because sometimes, um, it's difficult to keep your run slow enough to keep your heart rate down while well without your form breaking down. So the water is a great place to substitute this, keep your heart rate down, let the water do its work um, on your muscles and get a good recovery run in the pool. The next one is the zone one run. So that's your lower, your low aerobic run, your, I can run all day at this pace run. And there's a perceived exertion of six to 6.5 conversation paced effort. Zone two, now you're looking at, at your higher end of your aerobic, and this is um, what your marathon marathon pace would be at. Perceived exertion is 7 to 7.5. Zone three, now we're getting into just at, at sub-lactate threshold, and now we're looking at um, half marathon pace, maybe 10K pace, depending on um, on what, how, how fast you're running a 10K. But here you are, um, you start to work pretty hard at this pace with perceived exertion of eight to 8.5. And then you have zone four, which is above lactate threshold. And it includes like a 5k effort. It also here can really work all the way up to, to sprints and anaerobic work. So I'm going to give you, um, just run through some sample work workouts. I will know, um, on the last slide I did, and we just discussed how your heart rate um, is a little lower, but although your heart rate is lower, it will get up there. You will start breathing faster. You may even sweat in the water. Aqua jogging can be a very challenging workout. So when you go to start aqua jogging, um, this first workout that I have is, is called the short intervals workout. This is also one that can be modified for your first time or two back in, in the water or coming back to the water. And here, if you've never aqua jogged before, it's been a while since since you've been in, you'll be surprised to find out how challenging it can be. So when you first come in, you don't want to come in and start doing like crazy hard workouts right away. You want to make sure that you take the time to figure out what you, to get to make sure that your running technique is fine and to and to build up a little bit. So a first workout, for example, might start with this a 10 minute easy and then eight by one minute at um at like a Z3 effort in the water. So your sublactate effort where you're breathing hard, perceived exertion in the eight to um, 8.5 range. And, but then maybe take a minute easy in between those efforts. So that would, that'll take you about 15 minutes to do. And then you do your cool down so that your first workout, you might come in there with a 30, um, 30 minute workout. But then after that, once you get used to being in the water and you're, you're comfortable with your technique, you can start um, doing some longer workouts, but in 35 to 60 minutes, you can get in some very good um, workouts in the water. So this first one, the short um, intervals workout, 
uh, we start as you do on dry land with your 10 minutes of 10 minute warm up. And then this one has you at 10 by one minute at, um, at Z3 or Z4, depending on how hard you want to be doing your sessions. So you might be doing these at like a 5k effort. And then with the 30 second recovery, that's not quite enough in between to get your heart rate down and fully recover. So if you're looking, if you're going more intense and then you need additional recovery, you can increase that recovery time so that it's equal to the intensity time. So instead of 10 by one with 30 seconds easy, you might go 10 by one with one minute easy in between. And then after though, you've done the one minute intervals, aqua jogging is a great place to throw in some super high intensity work, 30 second intervals. So on land as endurance runners, we tend not to do much sprint work because um, sprinting is great for developing your top end speed, but um, there's there's risk of injury that comes with it because you're really working the muscles hard and there's a lot of pounding that comes with it. While in the water, you're not, you don't have that kind of impact. So it's a great place to really skyrocket your heart rate and then take the recovery in between to work in the, in the speed um, and your top end. Then after every workout, just like on dry land, you want to go ahead and do your cool down. So the next workout is a um, tempo pyramids. So with this one, you start out with your warm up again, and then you can structure the pyramids any way you want to. The first one, I have two examples here. One that goes, starts with a minute on, minute easy. Two minutes on, one minute easy. Three minutes on, one minute easy. Up to five minutes on, and then you work your way back down again. So this one, I have it being done at tempo, Z2, Z3 um, tempo work. And um, with with just the with the one minute. So as you start at the beginning, one minute is going to feel like plenty of time. As you get to the longer intervals, one minute becomes more challenging. Um, then the second example I have is with the thirty second. Here you go in thirty second increments. So much higher intensity now with but also with just the thirty seconds rest. So by the time you're done with the pyramid like that, you're you're working pretty hard. And this is pretty. The second one is a is a is a fairly short. Um, pyramid. So here it's, it's something that you might want to do three or five of them in a workout and then take a few minutes easy in between each of the sets, but you can really push yourself here get your heart rate up and really get in a, a solid workout. And again, finish with your cool down. And the second um, workout is a progressing intensity workout. So this one you start with, um, after your warm up, you start with longer intervals at a lower intensity, and then you step up the level of effort as you shorten the intervals. So this one has an example of five by five minutes at a tempo with one minute easy. And then you go to four by three minutes here where you're around lactate threshold, um, just below or just above lactate threshold with a minute easy. So, so now with just the minute off in between, it's not a lot of recovery time. So your heart rate's really going to stay up um, pretty high for that duration. And then you finish it off with those nice super hard sprints as hard as you can go in the water, really driving that cadence and getting it up above 100. Finish again with a cool down. And the last workout here that I'm going to show you is the fast finish workout. So in this one, after your warm up, um, I have it set up as five by five minutes of tempo and then finishing with a 30 second sprint. So you hold on, you do a nice working pace where you're, you can still, you know, talk and say a few words, but then you finish out with a really high sprint where you're just giving it everything you have, take two minutes to recover and then continue to repeat it. So this kind of workout, the main sets 35 minutes. So you go ahead, finish this, it's a 50 minute workout and you'll feel like you, you really got, you got something great in, in a fairly short amount of time. So two workouts that... I um, didn't list here that you can do in the water. Um, the first one is a recovery run. And like I mentioned before, I think that the water is a perfect place for a recovery run. You can go nice and easy. You can focus on your technique. You can work on some strength because of the resistance of the water and the water will do its work in terms of recovering your muscles. So it's just, that's a, a great opportunity to get in to do that. Um, the second one is your Z1 run. So you're training for a marathon. You've got your long runs. What are you going to do? You've got your two hour long run, your three hour long runs. How are you going to get those in? So yes, you can do them in the water. It's certainly an option, but the biggest downside to aqua jogging, I think is that it's just not very interesting. It's really hard to get in the water and continue to focus on your form and just keep on going on with your long runs for, for a, a couple of hours. So 
how do you how do you keep it interesting? How do you get in that longer aerobic work? So if you want to stay in the water and do all your training in the water, that's that's absolutely fine. So but you need to find something maybe that helps you get through the time. So it's a great thing if you can find a friend, you both need to get in a long run and it's a Z1 run is a conversation paced run. So you can have that conversation and talk to each other and just make sure that you that you continue to check your body and that your form looks good and everything and that you don't get so distracted with the talking but you can go ahead and that will make the time certainly go by a lot faster similarly and you can use music you can go to the pool at um at a time where other people are in the pool it's kind of interesting if you go like my neighborhood has um a group of of women who go and they just get together and they do like a water aerobics workout and sometimes i've gone to the pool while they're doing their workouts and you know you just kind of listen to them talk or listen to the music that they're that they're doing it's just something to distract you so um so that's for for Z1 runs. The other thing that just to um t- to give as an option there is maybe you don't do all of your your cross training in the water. Maybe there's some other options. So there's other things that are really great for your aerobic conditioning like spending time on a bike. And with a bike though, you do need to spend more time than you would running. So um, just as a as a rule of thumb, add an extra 50%. So if your run is um, a two hour Z1 run, you, you're gonna convert that into a, a three hour Z1 bike ride. Um, and the elliptical is a second option. So elliptical from a neuromuscular standpoint is very similar to running. It's low impact. So it works depending on the type of injury you have. So if you have a fresh stress fracture, you're not going to want to get on the elliptical. But as you're starting to recover, um, maybe with a hip flexor injury, something as you go on and if it feels okay, you can get that um, the lower impact of the elliptical and get in a, a solid cross training um, aerobic workout there. And then um, the last one I have here is is a wonderful option, which is the anti-gravity treadmill. In this one, you are running, you're using a treadmill, you're using your running form. So it's about as as similar as you could possibly get. But with these, it takes out some of your weight. So you're you're not carrying your full body weight. So it's a good way to, again, transition back to running. The biggest downside with the anti-gravity treadmill is that it's um it's hard to find they're very expensive and so if you can find them and um, financially it's something that you're able to do it's a it's a wonderful option and so i want to go back now and, and hit the second and third points um the second point was to incorporate intervals so that's what we talked about with the workouts so if you break things up if you've got a 30 minute let's say a 30 minute workout to do and you put in 15 by one minute intervals that makes your 30 on a on a minute break that makes your 30 30 minutes go by a lot more quickly than if you just say i want to do a 30 minute even tempo run so breaking it up really does help it gives you something else to look at and just you know bring your garment into the water and set your intervals and um and that helps helps break it up and then the other one that I really like is, is you're in the water anyway. So combine it with a swim workout. So you can, so you can get a, a great brick. You can do your aqua jog first and then go for the swim. You can mix them up. You can do you know, like 15 minutes of aqua jog and go 15 minutes to swim, come back. And that gives you the nice aerobic benefit and also gives you from the aqua jogging perspective, you do get the neuromuscular activation and strength. So that's all I have on aqua jogging, and I invite you to um, to ask any any questions that you have. My email is below, so you can reach out to me at any point if you have any questions. And thank you very much for your time today.